So you've got an idea for an app that you want to bring to life. It's exciting, it's visionary, and it just might work. However, you don't have the coding skills to execute all of it. If so, you have two main options, traditional app development or using a no-code or low-code app development platform like Flutterflow. In this video, we'll help explore the pros and cons of each approach and help you decide which one's the best for you. So let's get started. Let's start with traditional app development. This approach involves hiring a team of developers to build their app from scratch using programming languages like Kotlin or Swift for platform-specific deployment or Flutter and React Native for cross-platform deployment. In this scenario, you would hire a development shop, outsource your development to a contractor, or bring on a CTO to help with development. Let's start by exploring the pros of traditional app development. Number one, if you're extremely non-technical and don't want to deal with managing the functionality of your application, you can benefit here by handing off the entire development process to a developer shop or your partner. This can be extremely beneficial if you have a clear expectation of the app that you want to build and a set timeline and budget. Number two is complexity. Most dev shops should be able to handle complex applications and heavy workflows so that you can make sure that there's no limitation on development. They can help you identify which application frameworks and technical specifications will be needed for your specific build. Furthermore, you can integrate with a wide variety of APIs and third-party libraries given that the development shop has a skilled labor that meets your requirements. And finally, number three, experience. Development agencies provide a combined amount of experience from a wide talent pool that will make sure that the project is delivered to your standards. So agencies can draw upon past project experiences to guide you along your journey, take inspiration for your own application development workflow, and make sure that your project is delivered efficiently. Let's go ahead and switch over and look at low-code and no-code development platforms and the pros and cons for each. I'll be using Flutterflow as an example here, but you can use the general principles to help make your own decision. The first pro is fast time to market. For founders, if you're looking to test your idea with the market and launch fast, you can use the pre-built templates, drag and drop builder, and integrations to launch your application within a week. If you're using low-code builders with an integrated backend, these platforms will also be scalable right from the start, so you aren't just building a visual prototype. Furthermore, if you utilize low-code development, the developers you work with are able to skip the boilerplate code and hours of coding to speed up the time to market. Number two is control. You always have control over your own application. You don't have to wait to make that small design change that you've been thinking about. You can simply go into your editor and change it. Or worse, you don't have to wait to fix a bug that's been affecting your users. Here's Scott from Tagalong who shared this exact experience. Uh, we found Flutterflow and that really helped us not only build really fast and like recover from, you know, an app that wasn't working. And also we were able to build features and just things, you know, within hours uh, when something we knew something wasn't working. You feel so out of control when you're using a firm or, you know, any sort of developer team. So when you're able to even fix something very small, that makes a huge difference and then immediately release it. That's like next next level uh, comfortability in your own in your own business, you know. It's important to note a subpoint here. You may think that there's a loss of control via platform lock-in, depending on the app builder you choose. However, some low-code builders like Flutterflow have a custom-built IDE for all of your customization needs, and you can always export your code or download it if you need. And number three is cost. Especially if you're early on in the process and want to see how your user base interacts with your application, you can start with monthly plans that are offered by many no-code and low-code solutions. For Flutterflow, you can build and deploy your application for $70 per month and even adjust your plan based on your needs. Now let's jump into the cons. We'll start with the cons for traditional app development. Number one is pricing. When going to traditional development shop route, a contract to create your application can be anywhere from $15,000 to $200K, depending on the complexity of your application. This number expands and contracts as well, depending on if you choose to make changes after the final deliverable, if you want to include design work into your contract, or if you want to add a maintenance clause for after the contract is over. So if you're just starting out, this can be quite a pretty penny, especially if you're just validating your application idea. Number two is speed of development. Traditional development requires hardcore coding. And generally for creating complex applications, this process could take anywhere from two to eight months or more. This also contracts and expands depending on the complexity of your application. 
and the time to market will continue to expand depending on the features that you want to include into your development process. This brings up a sub point that I forgot to mention. When you outsource your development to a development shop, there can be a lack of transparency which may lead to extended development times and a higher cost. So if you do choose to go with this route, be sure to ask a lot of questions and make sure that there's an open line of communication between you and your partners. Lastly, maintenance and changes. Once your contract is over, if there's not a maintenance clause built in, you'll have to make sure that you have some dedicated talent on standby to make adjustments to your application. Specifically, custom built apps can be tough to regularly update and maintain. Since you may not have the technical capabilities to go ahead and change the application yourself, you may need to hire other developers after that contract is over to make the changes that you want to make. This can be quite frustrating, especially if you have bugs within your application that are preventing your users from making payments or just having a good experience using your application. Finally, let's look at the cons for no-code and low-code development. Number one is learning, if you consider that a con. You will need to learn a new platform if you're just getting started in the no-code or low-code world. However, this will pay massive dividends down the line since you'll be able to have an active hand in the development of your application. If you're learning Flutterflow, you can access our library of tutorials on our YouTube channel as well as our documentation, which I'll link to below. You can also access our community to get questions on problems that you're having while using the platform. Number two is platform deployment. Deploying using no-code or low-code tools is fast but depending on which platform you use, you may have access to limited platforms that you can deploy to. Since Flutterflow is based on top of Flutter, you can deploy to iOS, Android, and the web all while using one code base. However, if you're only planning on launching a web application, it may pay dividends to only use an app builder that is optimized for that platform. Number three is integrations. Although Flutterflow has been integrated with multiple different services, if you have a specific integration in mind that has not been set up by Flutterflow, you may still need to code this in as we continue to develop. It's important to note that building out these integrations is still possible within Flutterflow. However, building out custom integrations will also require hardcore coding. So where does that leave us? We like to see Flutterflow as a happy medium between traditional app development and the low-code, no-code development world. For non-technical founders, using Flutterflow provides the opportunity to have some transparency into the application development process and even have a hand in it while also having the option to always expand the capabilities of your application using real developers. For traditional developers, Flutterflow can help increase the speed of development by allowing you to skip over the boilerplate code and get right to the technical challenges that you really care about. Furthermore, these two parties work together perfectly on our Flutterflow Experts Marketplace, where you can find low-code builders, Flutter developers, and agencies that can help you along your application development journey without any limitations. Regardless of which option you choose, be sure to do your research and make sure to pick the approach that works best for you and your goals. And if you decide to go with Flutterflow, be sure to check out our other YouTube videos with tips and tutorials on how you can make the most out of the platform. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.